Hello ladies and gentlemen, Nick here and welcome to my first viewing reaction to Doctor Who Wild Blue Yonder, the second of the 60th anniversary specials. By the way, if the camera feels a bit slanted, that's because I've got the phone on kind of a slant. Sorry about that. Also, uh, this one is the story that they kept under wraps the most, so few, if uh, any, spoilers in the comments for this episode, please, dear viewers. We may go into more spoiler territory in the review, if I get around to doing that. Um, but, yeah, uh, trying to keep spoilers to a bit of a minimum as best we can in the... Uh, these videos, I kind of went a bit spoiling in the last one, but then again, Beat the Meep twisting was sort of kind, because it's an adaptation of a 40-odd um, year story, then it wasn't hugely spoilery. Uh, I did kind of discuss some spoilery stuff that was at the end, but it was kind of needed to be addressed because of the um, the ongoing arc for the, ser for the mini-series. So, yeah, some of the stuff in last week's ones weren't uh, we're okay to talk about but this one and next week I expect are probably going to be a bit more spoilery to talk about so I won't go too far into details here um what I will say is that this episode first of all is not a huge fan service episode like many people thought it was going to be there's no returning characters from previous episodes except one at the very end besides uh, the Doctor and Donna there is absolutely no other returning from a previous era character except one at the very end i'm not sure if they're going to be in next week's episode but they are but um spo um minor spoiler alert that is wilfridge mott played by the beloved bernard cribbins and he gets a lovely tribute at the end of the episode in the unleashed episode they say rusty they, rusty they said this was the one scene they filmed with him but i thought they were gonna have a scene where they pushed him into the tardis for some from some behind the scenes footage so yeah i've also um what how are they going to explain what happened to him in next week's episode so maybe maybe he will be in next week's but we'll see how that goes we'll get back to that next week um at time recording it is 8 12 on saturday the 2nd of december so the episode and the unleashed have not long since finished um and a quick look online the reaction to this episode some of it is positive some of it is um quite negative in fact i think this is going to go down as the least best received story of 14 zero i mean there was there was a one in three chance but you know i think this one's going to go down as the least well received and i know some people weren't so fond of last week's episode um but i think that one got a, a generally more positive reaction personally i preferred last week i rewatched it last night as i said after doing the reaction i really enjoyed it i thought it was a fun adventure story um and yeah, I stand by many of my opinions from the reaction, so I expect my review will probably echo some of that. Um, but yeah, I stand by the Star Beast was a very good introduction to this era. Wild Blue Yonder is a bit of a mad one, and they said next episode the giggle is like a is going to be an insane bonkers one, and it looks like it's going to be. But this one is is. Uh, it's interesting because Russell said it was going to be a scary one, and he's not wrong. It's um, it's a scary, bonkers story. It's um, yeah, <laughs> that's uh, the that's, that's pretty much it. And without spoiling it too much, I can confirm it's going to be spoilers and bonkers. Um, it is <laughs> scary and crazy, but in a pretty good way. Like it does um build up the tension pretty well. Um, the villains we do get, without spoiling, we don't actually know exactly what they are. We know they are shapeshifters um, and sort of like vampire-esque shift shapers that get onto the ship. And they have a very good way of scaring the Doctor and Donna and it's all building up really well. Um, and the way that they're revealed is really good. It's, um, yeah. So... I think in terms of the the build up of the scares, it's really good, and the um the what's, what's, who's who sort of thing that was um that was um, that was handled really well. So yeah, it's um I think it did scary stuff really well, and some crazy bonkers stuff, but it, it also 
funny, in, not funny, but fun in places. I think maybe if I rewatched it, I think I might find something more funny on a second viewing. Um, first, certainly more scary on the first viewing, but maybe on a second viewing, it might be a bit funny. Also, shout out to the props and visual effects department's team for some really great practical and um, CGI visual effects. So this episode is a it's pretty strong with that. Last week was a bit more um, um, mostly physical stuff um, with a bit of computer um, effects added in for stuff later on, like the ship and a few tweaks to beep. But for the most part, it was uh, prosthetics and physical stuff. This week is kind of a mostly visual one for the setting and some other sets, but uh, some other stuff. But yeah, it still blends it really good. It's a really visually pleasing story. Um, the opening is a bit of a crazy one. <laughs> this is one of the like oddest pre-title scenes in the series. I think they just kind of wanted to throw Isaac Newton and they just wanted the cameo. In fact, Isaac Newton appears in one episode of the Circular Time aud audios when he's like guardian of the Tower of London or something. Uh, it's a good uh, or anthology and good anthology of stories in that uh, one. So, um, although I think that one might have been my least favourite. Uh, I had to double check that one, but that's a good anthology of stories. Um, but I found Isaac Newton here to be an, an interesting addition to the series and uh, uh, the pre title It was an interesting addition. I'm not entirely sure why they included it, but um, <laughs> okay, fair enough. I guess it's a little bit of a world building. Who knows? Who knows? It could be saying that oh, Doctor and Donna did go on one or two other adventures in between. It, this episode is this is the like this is Russell's like random decision making, but also effectively creating a really good horror sci-fi adventure mystery story kind of blended together. Um it's kind of, again it's a bit bonkers. It's sort of like a I've seen I, I kind of felt like it was a bit of a, a similar to Midnight. I think it's like it's gonna be the new Midnight. Maybe not in terms of popularity after looking at uh, Twitter not too long ago, but um certainly in terms of the the style and the feeling. Um as well as also Heaven Sent. I saw some of those people mentioning that because that one is was mostly a, a sing was just Peter Capaldi as the twelfth doctor with a few moments with Clara, Jenna Coleman, um, The Veil, and also that one boy on Gallifrey at the very end. Um, for, but for the most part, it was basically just the Twelfth Doctor, maybe The Veil popping up as well in a scene. Here it's um, the Doctor and Donna, plus our two villains um, for the most parts. But it still feels like a mostly two-hander in terms of the performances, um, because, um, spoiler alert, they, um, David Tennant and Catherine Tate also play the villains. Um, and also a couple of other supporting actors for the other characters who pop up. Wilf, Newton, Newton's maid, um, housekeeper, I guess. Uh, Newton's housekeeper and maybe the odd extra here or there. Plus also whoever was in the robot. Um, if they, unless that was practical. Uh, that thing didn't really do an awful lot, despite being the only other thing on the marketing besides Doctor and Donna and the background of the spaceship. It was pretty much the only thing they marketed for the episode outside of them and the setting. But I think in the way of how it was done, it was handled. Um, also, I mentioned last week that... Um, I, th I think I might have mentioned, not last week, in the previous video, that um, about the whole so with the sonic screwdriver now having a lot of cool new uses. This episode, they do a clever thing where they have it kind of help fix the TARDIS, and then, it go and then when the TARDIS goes away, it goes with it. So they don't have the sonic screwdriver for most of the episodes. So if fans started saying, oh, the sonic screwdriver is getting even more overused and now it's gone even more stuff to make it like a, I, <laughs> like uh, some of the downgrades is it gets overused a lot and there's a lot of settings and it's like kind of a, get out, um, not just a get out of jail free card, but it gets out of the entire prison building um, card. Uh, the entire complex, if you know the allergy. This time they decide to just put the sonic screwdriver away for most of the episode once the first couple bits are done. 
So that's interesting. Also, they took the lock off at the beginning, and I feel like that's a nice, subtle, maybe unintentional, but I am if if all if it was intentional, very nice, silly appreciated reference to the censor rights removing the lock in the censor rights um, from 1964 in season one. Well, with Steph fucking bastard Coburn is not going to let us watch an earthly child, we're going to have to reference other season one stories. Ex uh, besides the Daleks, of course. The Daleks, of course, will get referenced frequently. Um, they, re they reference it in into the Dalek. But if Steph Bastard Coburn is going to not pro not let us watch an earthly child, we're going to have to reference other season one stories besides the Daleks, of which does get referenced. Um, so a reference to the censor rights is appreciated. Um I don't know if it was a direct in, um, reference to the sense of rights or just some or taking something from that one. Um, like, say, the fluid link thing from the Daleks was referenced in Oxygen. I'm not sure if it was a direct reference or if it was even intentional, but it still felt pretty good um, to have that thing. And also the the the, uh, the non Sonic screwdriver. That was a that was a nice touch. Yeah. I don't really have a huge amount to say on this one outside of this was a uh, this was a good creepy mystery story with a good twist with the monsters. I'm not going to go too much more into that, um, although you can probably guess what it was if you haven't seen the episode from what I've mentioned. And if you have seen the episode, you do know what I'm talking about. Um, and yeah, it's um it's a bit of a weird one. It's a bit of a strange one, but works effectively i mean it's good strange i guess um yeah like i said i don't think it's as good as last week's episode the star the star beast i thought that was a really good start to the era and um okay <laughs> time's up um which is surprising because i thought i did have a little bit more time I was going to say, also, um, controversially, I think some of Jody's eras were stronger. Don't shoot me! Um, like Power of the Doctor, for example. But, you know, I think for a second, and other eras, of course, um, but this, like, the most recent episodes. Um, but I safely say this was a, this was a solid second entry to this trilogy. Um, I don't know if I'm glad or not that we didn't have returning character from a past era or even a or future character. Some people theorize it could be the fifteenth the fifteenth doctor could turn up ahead of schedule. Um but yeah, I actually think this one kind of works better as a mostly two hander with the Doctor and Donna, as well as the villains that we have in the episode, with the additional character at the start and uh, characters at the start and end. Uh lovely uh, final scene with Wolf, lovely tribute and lead direct lead into next week. This one's more of a direct lead in than last time. It's st they're still separate stories, single part, individual, but these ones are, seem to be um, tying in a bit more. And I think this one ties in with la next week a lot more than the last one ties in with this one. Um, but yeah, either way, um, still really good. Um, like I said, I don't think it's good as last week, and it could go could be the weakest of the trilogy. But that being said, considering that last week was the the big comeback, and next week is the the grand finale for finale of this trilogy, and the tie in with the fifteenth Doctor's era, like this is the handover, as well as the big return of the toy maker. Then I think this one being like kind of a bit more so, um, a little bit more quieter. In the, in the terms of the importance, whilst also kind of doing its own unique thing, works pretty well. So, yeah, that's fine by me. So, yeah, Wild Blue Yonder, it was good. I'm not going to say it was amazing, but I liked it. I thought it was fine. Scary and mysterious in places, maybe a little bit funny and silly in places as well. We'll see on how I feel on the second viewing. But, um, yeah, otherwise, um, a pretty solid special. Next week, however, we see the return of the Toy Maker in the Giggle, where the 14th Doctor will regenerate into the 15th Doctor. We'll see how that all turns out. I'll see you guys next time for the Giggle. <laughs>